In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an amazing color grading effect in under 10 seconds. How is this possible? The key is to use a special macro that will do all the work for you. This video is going to be a lot of fun. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me today, I've left a download link for today's photo in the video description. From the same link, you can also download the color grading macro that we'll be using. After installing the macro, you'll be all set to follow along with the rest of this video. And for those of you that are brand new to macros, I've also included instructions on how to install the macro. Now I'm going to show you what this color grading macro does, how to adjust its results, and perhaps most importantly of all, I'm going to show you exactly how the macro works. That way, you will know how to make your own color grading effects. First, let's play the macro to see what it does. As you can see, this macro applies a cinematic color effect, which adds blue to our photo shadows while keeping the skin tones nice and warm. After applying the macro, you can close the library panel. If we open up the group that the macro created, we can see that each layer has been labeled with what it's doing. To adjust the macro's results, it's actually pretty easy. You can see that each of these layers has been set to 50% opacity. So if you want the layer to have a stronger or weaker effect, all you need to do is change its opacity. You can also lower the opacity of the entire group if you think the overall effect is too strong. And if you think the effect is not strong enough, you can duplicate the group by pressing Command or Control J. Then you can modify the opacity of the second group. If all you want to do is use this free macro, you can stop the video here. But if you want to learn exactly what this macro is doing, that's what we'll learn next. First, I'll delete the second group, and then bring the opacity of the original group back up to 100%. Then let's open the group and see how the first layer is affecting our image. As you can see, this layer is adding green to our photo. Let's double click on it to see exactly how it works. Inside this selective color adjustment, the macro has modified the neutral colors by increasing the cyans and yellows. Cyan mixed with yellow makes green, which is the color this adjustment is adding to the picture. There's one other very important part of this adjustment though which might not be immediately obvious. To demonstrate, I'll turn this group off and apply a selective color adjustment with the same settings we just saw. Then I'll lower its opacity to 50%, just like the layer inside the macro. As you can see, this adjustment looks terrible. <laughs> Why did the other layer look so good when this new layer we made looks so bad? The trick is blend ranges. Blend ranges allow us to target certain areas of our photo. To open blend ranges, press on this gear icon. Normally with blend ranges, you'll use the master category, which allows you to specify areas based on how light or dark they are. 
But in this case, we want to use the red channel. The problem with our selective color adjustment is that it's applying green to the model's skin. Since skin is primarily made of red, we can make it so this adjustment layer is not affecting her skin by bringing this node down. If you want it to affect her skin even less, you can also bring it over to the left. Now with our blend ranges modified, you can see that this adjustment is doing a much better job of adding green to our photo without affecting her skin. Now that you see how important blend ranges are, I'll delete this layer and turn our group back on. The next adjustment, our macro applied, is a split toning adjustment, which is adding blues to the shadows. If I open up this adjustment layer, you can see exactly how much blue is being added. Once again, blend ranges is being used to make it so our adjustment does not ruin her skin. To create cinematic coloring, it's important to add blues to the shadows and add warmth to the highlights. To do this, we could use the split toning adjustment layer, which has the ability to affect shadows and highlights. But I found this adjustment layer isn't as strong as I'd like it to be when targeting the highlights. That's why this macro applies a color balance adjustment. With this adjustment layer, the highlights are having red and yellow added to them. And in this case, blend ranges actually aren't being used because we want this layer to affect her skin. The next adjustment is an HSL, which is boosting the colors of her skin. If you click on the red channel circle, you can see this adjustment has been set to target just the reds, which is what skin color primarily is. The adjustment is increasing the saturation and luminosity of the reds, making them brighter and more saturated. To really target the color of your subject's skin, you can press on the picker, and then click on your subject's skin. This will adjust the colors the HSL layer is targeting. And just as a quick tip, you need to select one of these color channels before you can use the picker. Finally, our macro has added a curves adjustment, which is being used to brighten the shadows since the previous adjustment layers made the shadows quite dark. And there you have it. That's exactly how this macro works. Now you can use these same techniques and apply color grading to any of your own images. In addition to color grading, Affinity Photo can also be used to change the color of specific parts of your image. To learn how you can change the color of anything, you can check out this video over here. This video will teach you how to change any object into any color. Thanks for watching, my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.